Ajanta Elora. Remember that it is a narrow waist. It is, and they have a well-developed lower body structure. That is actually that there is absence of visceral fat and the presence of subcutaneous fat. Uh, subcutaneous fat is uh, very good because it, you know, it gives warmth to the body, it supports the muscles that are developed and it gives strength. Uh, the lower body in women has more fat because uh, you know, it is, it is uh, according to the dark story of evolution, we know that man has evolved uh, in such a way according to, you know, the circumstances in which uh, every, in fact, every organism had to uh, evolve. So for pregnancy and lactation, in the pre-menopause years, you know, in the period of uh, menstruation, in all those decades, uh, there is a tendency for fat, more fat to be deposited in the lower body. But after menopause, that goes down and then there is a deposition of fat, um, you know, uh, the visceral fat in the core. So uh, if the woman has been training her core and has been doing weight training, no matter what activity you do, if you're, if you're uh, offering resistance, then uh, the core muscles where all the uterus and the female body parts are there, where women are very prone to, uh, you know, the prolapse of the uterus and uh, weakening of the, uh, the walls in the core uh, muscles because of the childbirth and, um, you know, other periods and all that they go through. So uh, it helps a lot for women to weight train uh, the gluteus maximus and the core, uh, the quadratus lumborum or the, uh, you know, the rectus abdominis, they're all connected. Uh, it is very important to train. So I would say that if you, uh, the weight training should be the central uh, um, fitness modality. Everything around uh, should center, uh, should be revolving around weight training. That should be your prime uh, and supreme priority. If you are, uh, weight training that if you if you're having, having good cardiovascular fitness it will help uh, that when you are uh, lifting very heavy weights you will not get breathless and the blood will be reaching uh, all the extremities uh, the phalanges the capillaries the, you know there will be well development or very good development of the vascularity so you will have good uh, cardiovascular pulmonary system if you are uh, having good range of motion, you will be, ha you know, you have good flexibility, you will not get injury when you're weight training. Uh, if you're stretching, you have good uh, proprioceptory, neuromuscular <coughs> facilitation, we know that the active myosin contract when we, uh, when we contract the muscle and then it has to be put back in place. Uh, so uh, everything should uh, center, the, the target should be weight training and uh, especially uh, if it is resistance training because that will keep give you the structure and uh, i would like to talk about bone density you know that is that uh, i want to prioritize that because we know that we all have limited time and i'm keeping that in mind uh, the bone density now uh, in the younger years the osteoblast the bone forming cells they are uh, more and uh, uh, as we age, the osteoclast, the degeneration uh, that is caused by the, uh, these cells, they increase in number and the osteoblasts go down. If you're weight training, then you can maintain a positive ratio there. That is the first benefit. The second benefit of weight training, it gives the right stimulus for the calcium to be deposited in the bone. Like consider you're going uh, to buy uh, groceries, you get a packet of sugar and you're pouring it in a jar. When you pour it, there will be some sugar still left in the packet. But uh, if you just shake the jar a bit, then there is more space that is created and the rest of the sugar can get accommodated in that. So, uh, you know, this is what happens to the bone. When you weight train, it gets the, stimulators, uh, the stimulus to absorb more calcium and there are more uh, bone cells that is formed. And bone is a very important and active tissue because the bone marrow uh, produces the red blood corpus cells and uh, it's the most active tissue in fact. It keeps our structure, of course, it's the skeleton, it keeps us intact and it keeps us going. It uh, gives us the strength and the basic, uh, you know, motivation to keep moving. We know that we are uh, firmly on the ground. And the lean muscle mass is that, um, you, uh, of course, if you're weight training, your lean muscle mass will increase. And uh, the myth about, I've already cleared the myth about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and uh, the visible muscles and the muscle fibers that are there inside. You need to have your tendons, ligaments, everything strong. That is the actual essence of bodybuilding. You're building everything in your body. So uh, when the lean muscle mass is uh, sufficient, your metabolism will be up and there will be more of, uh, you know, the, the visceral fat will go down so you'll be burning more calories 
uh, even when you're sitting, the, the basal metabolic rate will be uh, very, very desirable. Ma'am, it's really, really impressive of you to see.